I think well-being is an incredibly important lens through which to see public policy in a sense because all too often we've got governments of all colours, successive governments, who seem to think that the most important objective of all government departments is to increase GDP, gross domestic product. And no one ever asks whether GDP is a useful measure, whether it measures things that matter, and clearly there's plenty of evidence that all it measures is the amount of money circulating in the economy, not whether that's being used in a good way or a, or a bad way. I think if we could have well-being as our objective, it would be a way of unifying the um, areas of work of all government departments, and perhaps also being a, a way of, of actually engaging people in politics more effectively as well. I think everybody could agree that actually what we want to do is to increase the well-being of as many people as possible. That as an objective of public policy, I think, would be a much more meaningful one to people's lives. GDP can go up and people's uh, sense of, of, of security or, or happiness can certainly go down. And indeed that's been happening over many years when GDP has been going up and people's contentment levels have either stayed the same or gone down. So GDP doesn't work as, a, as an organising principle of our economy or of our societies, whereas I think well-being can work. And we can, we can define it in as many different ways as we like, but as if, it's, if it's essentially about people's sense of, 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 of contentment, of, of, of flourishing, of identifying their qualities and ensuring that they have the best possible way of developing, I think those are the kinds of issues that could really make a difference in our public policy discourse. I think one of the advantages of talking about well-being as an organising principle is that it allows us to really make much more visible and tangible the connection between the well-being of individuals and the well-being of our wider environment of the planet. It's impossible really to imagine a scenario whereby individuals have higher levels of well-being but they're living on a wrecked planet where the air we breathe is poisoned, the water we drink is poisoned the animals that we share the planet with are, are dead. I mean, no one could imagine such a thing. And so I think if we talk more and more about well-being, then that connection between our context, our environment upon which we absolutely depend for our survival and our own lives and what we do in our own lives is much easier to make. I think it will be a way of, of getting away from this division between the environment on one side and society on the other. It's a way of bringing those two things back together as they are in reality.